What you're looking at is a most recent order that I just submitted with my brokerage on 1-5-2023 and I shorted 1,000 shares of a company called Oatly Stock. At about $2.30 per share, I shorted about $2,300 or so of this company. Now this business has been growing a lot. It's one that has been growing in popularity and you may have seen their products everywhere. Their products have been growing quite significantly in popularity and you may have seen this brand in your local grocery store. Just flat out, they've been growing into new products including ice cream, Cream, and of course their flagship product oat milk. Now this company may have been growing a lot but it's not a business that I think is viable. It's not one that I like and today's big move up puts it at a current 1.2 billion dollar market cap but these losses are not going to be sustainable in my opinion. I'm going to go over in a very quick brief video why I think that this company is not sustainable, why I think it's worth shorting a lot of honestly if I had more money available. Instead of two thousand dollars I'd probably be shorting four, six, eight thousand dollars worth of this company because I do not think it's going to provide long-term wealth a long-term track record for growing money. I look at investing businesses as you see on my YouTube channel where I always disclose the balance of my account, which you can see right here, which currently sits at 37,359. We lost a little over a grand a day, that's okay. I'm looking for companies that can grow their long-term compounding wealth, that can grow profitability and top line revenue. Many companies can grow top line revenue, that's easy, but not many can grow the bottom line earnings, which Oatly cannot do that. So far it's gotten worse and worse and worse in terms of their free cash flow, in terms of their net income, their EBITDA, their earnings per share, all that stuff has been going in the wrong direction and they've been diluting shareholders and they're about to start raising a lot more debt to stay alive in my opinion. So we're going to go over in this video why I think Oatly is not a good buy, why I shorted a thousand shares of this company and why I think it's going to likely be the next bankruptcy candidate for 2023 or 2024. It's going to be a fun one. Let's go ahead and dive into Oatly stock. But before we get into all that, we have to talk about today's sponsor, Moomoo. Moomoo is a new up-and-coming brokerage that is taking the world by storm. Commission-free trading, level 2 data, advanced technical indicators, earnings calendars to see the date of financial statement releases, and institutional tracking to follow Warren Buffett's portfolio are just a few examples of what Moomoo has to offer. With this being my first sponsor in the channel, I have fully vetted their company and stand behind their vision. Moomoo currently trades on the NASDAQ under ticker symbol FUTU for FUTU and is SIPC insured. If you sign up below using my special referral link, you can get anywhere from 1, 10, or even as high as 20 stocks for signing up when you use my special referral link down below in the description or in the pinned comment down below. Free stock amounts can be as high as $1,000, so sign up now using the link in the description or pinned comment down below. You would help support me and my channel by doing so and give yourself an edge in the world of investing. Thank you so much, Moomoo, Moo, for sponsoring sponsoring this video. Now back to the content. Okay, this is the first problem I have with Oatly. Welcome back. You can see that they always address this huge TAM, this total addressable market, this $631 billion market. Right here it says $631 billion total addressable global dairy retail market opportunity. Now the problem is it's a global dairy retail market. So first off, the dairy market in general, most of that being your general everyday cow market, is much, much bigger than oat milk. You have to segment a huge part of this out because you have to factor in 90 plus percent of this not being oat milk. It's from a traditional cow, not from oats. So take away 90% of that. Then of that market, you have to factor in they have to compete with other oat makers. Oatly is not the only player in the game. There are other competitors that they can still market share from, and they have to split even that smaller category into themselves. And they talk about how they're growing, and they are growing, don't get me wrong, but if you look at analysts estimates for this year and next year, they're only growing 11% in 2022 to finish out the last quarter based on their projections. Quarter over quarter on a year over year basis, you can see that they're basically flat 0.4% growth, which is practically nothing. And if you want me to be honest, this 26% growth rate next year in 2023, I don't think it's going to happen. We'll see. Stay tuned. But I don't think that's going to last throughout 2023. Now, why is that? Because the popularity for oat milk has been downtrending. And same thing with like vegan foods, like companies like Tattooed Chef. Tattooed Chef is a company that was a big grower throughout 2020 and 2021. For example, you can see the revenue generally going up and it probably looks a little bit skewed because 
because this data is actually not right right here. I'm not sure why that showed up. But generally speaking, this company was growing revenue 20, 30%. Let's see if we can get an annual chart to get a better view of this. Yeah, this looks more accurate. 2019, 84 million. 2020, 148 million. 2021, 213 million. But if you look on a quarter over quarter basis now here in 2022, they're having troubles. And the most recent quarter, not only did they not grow, they actually shrunk 8%. And I see a similar story likely happening here for Oatly. They're projecting big growth and I think it's not going to come to fruition. I think they could still grow, don't get me wrong, but I don't think it's going to be massive uptrends like you see right here. On an annual basis, if you see over the last year, they've been growing quite significantly. 52% last year, which is pretty impressive, but the losses are going in the completely opposite direction. 2019, they lost about 100 million. 2020, they lost almost 200 million. They almost doubled their losses. And then if you look at the jump from 2020 to 2021, they over doubled their losses, losing almost half of a billion dollars selling oat milk. So when you look at this, you have to value any business at a present value of all of its future cash flows. Now, not only did that annual chart, let's look at it again. Not only did 2019, 2020, and 2021 look awful, but if you go to a quarter over quarter basis throughout 2020, it gets even more apparent how bad this is each and every quarter. In the most recent quarter, they lost $148 million alone. And when you consider the fact that this company is trying to grow revenues and they're having to sacrifice all profits at doing so, you can see how quickly they're burning through their cash. In the most recent quarter, they only have literally $120 million on the balance sheet, and they burned more than that in cash last quarter. So this company is low market cap. It's gone down a lot. If you look since its IPO, it's went down 88%. From its all-time high, it's went down more than 90%. And if you look over the last year, it's also down a similar 71%. But over the last week, it's up 34 It's had a huge recovery over this last month, and it's pretty much doubled from its lows just a couple weeks ago. This is why I'm taking advantage of shorting it while it's starting to recover because honestly, while a $1 billion market cap doesn't sound like a lot, when you consider a business that likely has stagnating growth, a lowering market opportunity that is really a lot smaller than what they're projecting, and they come up with all these excuses. I'm not even going to go over this line by line, but they look at what their margin should be versus what it actually is, and you can see their margin right now sits at 2.7% basically nothing. They, they basically have no margin and it gets lower and lower for all these BS reasons, including uh, uh, foreign exchange headwinds and including inflationary pressures, consumer mix, uh, problems in Asia. There's all this nasty, gross stuff that it likely is not going to last by the time this popularity comes back, if it ever comes back. This downtrend is going to continue. In my opinion, I think the same can be said for the stock and the business. The popularity of its products are going down. The stock is going down. And I think it's easy easy to look at the stock and say, oh wow, look over the last several years. It's went down a lot and now it's at $2. Now's the time to buy. Well, I think $2.30 is likely going to be around the highest price we ever see. I don't think there's really going to be much to revive the stock and I think it's running out of steam from its uptrend and it's going to go back down towards its long-term price of $0. Thank you guys so much for watching. Check out Moomoo down below if you haven't already. Subscribe to the channel if you want to support me and get signed up so you can get up to 20 free stocks. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll catch you all next time.